Welcome everybody to Space Chem. Today's showing off is about an interesting little puzzle game that I've mentioned before called Space Chem. Hmm, funny about that. Space Chem is available on Steam for a pretty cheap price and you can get it with the two, um, oh, what are they, downloadable options that give you some special things. One of them is called 63 Corby, and the other is this little, um, Australian thing. This you get some stuff for TF2. But let's start off simple options. We've got music. Make the music very quiet, very loud, and sound. The music in this game is really good. We've got languages, full screen, blah blah blah. Not a ton of graphical options, but that's okay since this doesn't need a ton of graphical options. Uh, they have a profile system where we have three profiles. This is the big one I've used. And two new ones, and we'll start with this one just so I can show you some extra features that a new profile would get to in time. And then just some decoration. There's also a forums thing over here, uh, Research Net, and it's available for Android on the Google Play Store. There are challenges, these are achievements, you can see my, this profile has gotten some of them, but not all of them, obviously. I'm not done with the game. <laughs> so, Okay, so, let's go ahead and start, and see what we get. So when you start up the game, you come to a planet select screen, and there are multiple planets. They each have different missions on them, different looks, and so on. So you start here on Cernimir 2, and there's all sorts of little thingamajiggers. I'm going to go to this one, A Brief History of Space Cabin. Because it's a good one that shows you what the game is about, as opposed to these, which, well, all of this whole thing is a tutorial level, but these are especially tutorial. You can see here when you mouse over it that on the left hand side there are comparisons between everyone else who's uh, done this. And it's in a histogram sort of fashion, so you can actually see, oh, you know, am I doing really well? Not so well. In my case, I've done completely accurate. Done what everyone else has done, except for a few people who managed to get like some lower numbers. And that's just a an interesting little leaderboard thing. They have their own leaderboard to get tab for. But let's see what the game is about. So, this is the actual screen of the game. Your gameplay takes place in this reactor. This reactor is limited to this size, you're not going to get any different size, and it's definitely very different from a modern-day reactor. Moving on, we've got these two Waldos here, that's what they're called, the circle things. And when we start, we have all these controls down here. These are the start controls. So when we start, the Waldos move, and they move along their path. We can pause, we can stop, and we can uh, increase the speed of the simulation with these buttons. You can also use the 1, 2, 3, 4 keys to move around your speeds. Now, that's pretty simple. The goal is to get things from here over to here. Also fairly simple. So we, what we've got to do is we've got to pick up this hydrogen and somehow turn it into hydrochloric acid over here. Now that's different from just dropping off a hydrogen here and a chlorine here got to actually put a chemical bond in between them, which is one of the things that makes this game really cool. Because not only does this game just say, okay, you know, find a way to uh, logistically pick something up and move it around and stuff, but you actually have to attach and move and change bonds and molecules around, and it can get really complicated and takes a lot of time. It's a great brain training game if you're interested, but then again, most puzzle games are. So how do you do that? Well. You use all of these controls. There are arrow controls here, and you can see that there are also um, keyboard shortcuts in case you don't like using the mouse. For some reason, I don't end up using the keyboard shortcuts as much here, but that's just me. So you can take these, drag, and place them somewhere on here, and you'll see that they're color-coded. There's a uh, red one, and if we come down here, we can hit tab, or click down here, so tab, 
we can click down here to get others as well. Oh, look at that! The red ones and the blue ones are completely separate from each other. You can click and drag them around. The red will only interact with red and blue only interacts with blue. Arrow keys, in this case, change the direction of your path. So now when I play it, the blue Waldo goes up. I still don't know why they're called Waldos. Now let's say you don't want this uh, this red guy. You have some options. You can either drag him down and replace him with a uh, different one, or you can right click on anything and a little menu comes up. And this is a really cool menu because you can say, it, oh, it's red, it's blue, and depending on what it is, you have some options. So I, in this case, I can just change it around without having to move it. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna come over here. This thing, as you see, appears in this square right here. It says, don't bum 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 bum, right there. This is gonna appear in that square. This is gonna appear in this square, which means that we probably don't want our start thing to be right there. Our starts can also be moved around. Red doesn't need to, but blue's gonna be moved around a little bit, just so that we go there and do stuff right away. So, while those can pass through each other, Ta-da! But, as you'll see in a moment, they cannot pass through each other if they're both carrying atoms or molecules. Waldos aren't really things that take up space. They're more like optical tweezers or something. And optical tweezers can easily pass through each other. So they're just light. They're not matter. However, matter, that is hydrogen, chlorine, or whatever have you, just can't do that. You can mouse over these things, by the way, and you'll see down in the... See? Watch, see? Down there? Down in the bottom right, that a little number appears. Uh, this is the position in its periodic table, the atomic number. It tells you a little bit the name, the symbol, and it also tells you how many bonds that thing can hold. This thing can hold up to seven bonds. That's single, double, triple, what have you, up to seven of them. Hydrogen can only hold up to one. If for some reason you need an element that's not listed here, you can come down to this uh, hydrogen button. And you get the entire periodic table up to Mitnerium. Obviously the game is slightly out of date considering that we now have uh, elements up to Fluorovium and Librimorium over here somewhere, Copernicium, etc. Um, Rungenium. Oh, is there Rungenium up here? Sad. Anyways, the fact that you can use Mitnerium is still pretty cool. So you can pick any one of these. And they're useful in production missions, which we'll get to. So let's go ahead and actually grab some atoms. To do that, you've got a couple things. Here's an input and a grab drop. On the other hand, way over here, there are outputs, and that will, inputs and outputs are the things that actually move the molecules or atoms in. So, in this case, watch what happens when we input and the wall that goes over there. You see that? As soon as it hit this, it input, it sucked in a hydrogen from somewhere, a tank, and a hydrogen appeared in that square. Now we didn't pick it up because there's no grab button there. So if we want to grab it, we can put this right here. This has the grab drop, grab or drop capability. So if I have this guy here, he can grab or he can drop, depending on what he does when he goes over it. If he has an atom, he'll grab or he'll drop it. If he doesn't, he will grab one if one is there. Or if you want to keep things a little nice, you can say grab only on this square, drop only on this square. So he's going to grab on the square. Whether it's grab or grab drop, doesn't matter right now. So let's grab. And there we go. He's picked it up and now he's moving it along. And he just kind of sits there and goes, I don't know what to do. Because the path ends right there. Well, that's not helpful. We'll need to take this guy down here. Which is where the bonders are. these That's what these things are. They're bonders. So, what do bonders do? Well, in order to understand that, we'll need to grab our chlorine atoms so that we can bond it. Let's come over here. Grab. These inputs, by the way, can be configured to input alpha or input beta. Blue is starting on beta, but I can easily move blue up here if I need to. And blue can easily get alpha, just as red can get alpha or beta. Likewise, the outputs, there's psi and omega. In case you don't know your Greek, this is psi, lowercase psi, and this is a lowercase omega. Your psi and omega can be switched either way. So if you have a very complicated system that needs you to, uh, red needs to input both of these and output both of these, and blue does the same thing, that's very brutal. 
or maybe you just want red to be on the bottom, you can just switch around that to Google too. But uh, that does become important because at this point, if red were the thing that outputs, red would have to make sure that it outputs to Omega. Because if you try outputting Psi, Psi output is disabled. So let's drag that off and it'll go away. Now, what's going to happen if these two come together like this? Well, let's find out. Haha! -ha! As I said earlier, you can't have things coming in the same place at the same time. Collisions between atoms are not allowed to happen. They're just not allowed. So this is just a simulation, and it's just going to be like... Rah, 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 rah. And when you've completed your simulation successfully, you move on to the next level. And whatnot. So, well, that's odd. That's okay. Here we go. Now we don't have to worry about that. Now they'll input, grab, and move along. And you notice that they're at different points in time just because the, this guy had less distance to travel. Distance and time become very important because the speed of everything is constant. These things move at one cycle, one block per cycle. Now they're not necessarily seconds, but they move at one block, one square on the grid per second, or per cycle, I should say. So that's really one purpose. You know what? That's the frequency, the speed at which they move at. Knowing that, you can plan out how far or how long thing is going to be. And that way you don't have to worry about complicated math about speed and time and distance and time and everything. Just worry about distance. This distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this guy gets, you know, here first. What that means is, first, let's have these guys drop. I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch to red. And now they're both going to drop once they, their atoms since they get there. Let's show you that. Drop, drop, perfect! And the other thing we want to do is we want them to bond their atoms. So, let's have this guy place a bonder right there, just so that it gives you enough time to see what's happening. Do, 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 do. Drop, drop, watch, bond. Now there's a little bond there, and now these two things are stuck together. To really understand what that means though, let's try something a little different. I'm going to have this bond right here, and this guy is not going to drop. Watch what happens. Look at that. This guy never dropped. But the bond was still made because these two atoms were on the bonders at the same time. That's the important part. You can have a molecule that keeps moving around, so long as he's on the bonder with, along with the other atom, at the right time, they'll bond. Once they've bonded, the one that's attached to the world though is the one that moves around. So now, this guy can move uh, the molecules around all he wants, no problem. Now that we have him attached, let's just go ahead have an output. Now this is a little odd to have red output, so maybe you don't want to have red output, but watch what happens. So we'll do this, and I've, I've done this so that he continues to loop around, but you don't have to. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to put pause in here. I'm going to say drop. Now it doesn't have to be, it can be anywhere here, so long as everything gets dropped. Let me, let me show you. Let's put them here, and output. Remember we have to switch this to Omega. That's the one we're outputting. And I'll actually move this up here just so you can get a chance to see this. When the Waldo gets up here, the simulation will pause automatically, allowing us to see what's happened. Input, grab, drop, bond, drop, output. We got a little goal up there. So the output happened, we got this, we worked good. Now you notice when we dropped it, it was very different from what it says there. Let's move the pause down here and you can see. Make it go a little faster. So now it's paused. We dropped it and it's not in the right spot and it's at the wrong angle, but that doesn't matter. The game only looks for the right molecule regardless of bond angle and regardless of position in this 4x4 grid. Now, let's say you want to get things done faster, and you're like, you know what, I don't I don't need that. I don't need this loop at all. I can just drop it right there. Go away. There we 
we go. That ought to work, right? And let's find out. Because, yeah, it goes by faster. Oh no, look at that. It didn't, it didn't output. Oh no, and now it's gonna collide. So it out, hit the output, nothing happened. I should have had the pause there. But because this is bonded to this thing, it will not output. It's in the right grid, but the entire molecule has to be in the grid to output. Another problem to watch out for, take this one down, right there. Watch what happens this time. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. I forgot to grab on there. Yeah, watch what happens this time, derp. Then now he carries... Atoms can't leave the bounds of a reactor, and so it's going to stop. The first time we tried this, the Waldo was just holding on to the H, and so that was fine. But this time, if the Waldo is holding on to the H, the CL is just coming along for the ride, so if the Waldo tries to move down, the CL gets pushed out of it. There's a collision, basically. It's not going to work. Also, music? Little epic. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch it around a little bit. So having red um, output is a little silly, it seems. Oh. And, we're going to move this down lengthen just a little bit. This is going to come up here. And it's going to be a drop. Red. So red's going to drop. And blue is not going to drop at all. Blue's going to hit the bond at the same time that red drops. I have the input there. And let's find out if this is going to work. Make sure that we have the output. And we'll need a drop as well. So now everything goes input, grab, bond, drop. Oh, the drop's got to be down here because we're getting the chlorine, not the hydrogen. Output. And it goes around and around, filling up our goal. Let's find out if this works. Testing. Even if you think it's going to work, testing is the only real way to make sure it does. Yes, it did. So watch what happens again. I'll pause it this time. It grabs. As soon as it gets here, this is going to drop, so this outline will no longer be bold. There we go. It made a bond. This is like last minute, very close, very close timing. That not holding on anymore. It's being held on here. He drops and outputs. And it continues. The point of having a loop is that you can get 10, because otherwise you'd only make one. Every puzzle has to have a loop. You'll never be able to complete a puzzle unless you have a loop. That's just it. Some puzzles can be, like this puzzle, could be completed using only the blue line. But it's more, much more efficient to use both. Let's go ahead and speed things up. There's no, ta-da! There's no point in letting and watching it all once you know it's going to work. In fact, that's what that fourth speed setting is for. Uh, the other speed settings are, okay, I know some part's going to work, let's go see the rest of it. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. But that fourth speed setting is, okay, I know it all works, boom, let's get it done. Because you don't need to sit there and watch it. That's not part of the game. The game is setting it up. Once you set it up, it does the rest itself. It's pretty much programming. That's exactly what it is, actually. So apparently, um, I did slightly better. You'll see that I did 138, and the best was 158, so I've done a little better on cycles. That's time. Reactors used, one. I'll show you more about that in a moment. Symbols used, which those symbols with the little arrows and everything else. So I used 16, last time I used 18, so I did a little better this time. You also notice up here that there's something about story and training. There is a story as we go through this, and every so often, you get extra... I'm not going to go too far, but every so often you get extra story things that show up. I'm kind of let you go through the story yourself, because you're like, whoa, this game has a story? Yeah, it does. And it gets it gets interesting, because otherwise it's just like, okay, how many different molecules can I make? That's going to be boring. Sure. Well, they, they change it up a little bit. Training. So, there are different little training things that show up. Um, I didn't talk about the sync thing. I'll talk about that later. There are different little training things that show up. And these training things tell you about 
the symbols that tell you about how bonding works, which is basically teaching you chemistry, like legit real life chemistry. This is not like just made up chemistry. This is legit chemistry. There are some details that are not quite correct, such as bond angles. Oh no, bond angles are normally like 109.5 as opposed to 90. No one cares. And there are some details like um, phosphorus can have six total things attached here, phosphorus can only have four, six bonds, but only four things. But it, it works. This is still legit chemistry. The only difference is that in real life chemistry, labs or classes, you can't uh, get your things to happen exactly the way you want, atom by atom. It's a lot more imprecise in real life. But other than that, this is like, I love this game because it's actually, if, if you like the educational part, you know, it's great. Let's go on to another planet. I, I'm just kind of, ah, we're going to go to this one or something, fish cake. This is a production mission, and the first production mission is not really a production mission, it's just about pipelines. So, in a production mission, you usually have some type of supply, whether it's a pump or a gas tank, and you usually have a cargo boat. And the cargo boat, as you can see, um, accepts a certain molecule, and even tells you a little bit of real-life data about that molecule. Hydrochloric acid, HCl, a powerful acid with many industrial uses, historically and currently known as muriatic acid. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you can go buy muriatic acid. That's hydrochloric. It's also the acid in your stomach. You also notice there's that little um, diamond shape. Look, look right over here. There's a diamond shape that tells you about the health, flammability, and reactivity of this molecule. This molecule is rather dangerous to your health, but it's not flammable and only slightly reactive. Interesting. You can get molecules and atoms from one place to another by using pipes. However, pipes can't go anywhere. There are some features on, uh, terrain features on planets that prevent you from moving somewhere. So, as you can see, this little guy right here, there's a, a bunch of, I don't know if you can make out, but there's like grid lines, and there's a big rock in the way. So if I want to get this guy over, I'd have to go around. What that does is that really makes it, um, tricky to set up your reactors. What you have to do in a production mission is actually place your own reactor. Now, your reactor obviously can't take up a, a space that a pipe can't go, but it can go anywhere else. So I can set my reactor right here, and then I set my input up. I can set my input up like this, or if I wanted to confuse someone, like, you know, myself, I could set it up the other way around. And this way, when you click on the reactor, double click, the input actually switches sides. You can exit the reactor down here, and you can exit the level down here, you can also get your story and training and click here. From out from outside the reactor, let's go back to this. From outside the reactor, you can start, and you'll see things going through the reactor, and you'll also see more or less what's happening inside. Since there's no input happening, nothing much happens. And right now, all that happens is the pipe will get full. Well, no big deal. So let's just stop the simulation for a moment. Double click to enter the reactor, and we're just gonna set up the same thing because it's the same sort of thing. However, we'll notice there's no like output over here. To output, we're gonna have to select an output slot, and this time I'm gonna use the top one because I think it will work a little bit nicer. So we select the output slot and we connect it up. Now here's the interesting thing: in the research missions. Your stuff comes from a tank that's like right next to you. It comes from a beaker or a flask that's sitting right next to you on the bench, and you have unlimited supply. You still have unlimited supply in the production missions, but watch what happens when we input. So nothing's happening. Oh, their hydrogen happened. But what's happening? Let's pause it and look out here. What's happening is that even though we said input, the atom is well, it hasn't arrived yet, so it said, oh, input, but no one. But there's nothing there, so it's just going to wait until it gets something. Let's go ahead and set up the rest of this. Let's do it mostly the same way as we did the first time, but there's going to be a couple differences. First of all, the red is the line that will be picking up and dropping off the final molecule. You'll have to drop it there. You'll have to output psi. That's fine. Blue will just have the boring job of moving back and forth, and if 
you want, you can shorten up lines. Like I could shorten up Blue's line like this. Um, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna have to sync. So I could actually shorten up Blue's line even more. There we go. I could make it very short. But let's have a little bit of space on here. We, we might want it. Um, the line that's actually running the output is a little more limited. I can't shorten this line up a lot unless I remove the bonders. Well, I, I can do that. They don't have to be in that same configuration either. So there we go. I can move the bonders around. And now I can make this a little shorter as well. And shorter means faster, which means a little more efficient. Of course, that does mean that this guy has to join up to match. That's fine. This is the one that's going to be pressure. So, if I do this, watch what happens. Blah, 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 we wait for the hydrogen. Um, oops. I, this is completely wrong. So we wait for the hydrogen, we grab it, we drop, we output. Um, yeah, so the, the wrong thing went over there, first of all. Okay, well, well uh, look, we can fix that, right? No problem. Well, okay, that means we don't want the drop. We still want that drop. We want this guy to drop here, and we want a bond, right? Okay, so now it'll work. Now it should work. All right, so we wait. Bond, oh. What? 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 They're, not, they're not timed anymore. The same problem happened. So they're not synced up. How do you fix that? You fix that with these. These are sinks. And sinks are very interesting things and they can get very tricky. A sink means that this Waldo will stop here until the other Waldo gets to that spot. The other Waldo will not stop. The other Waldo will keep moving. Once he's at that spot, they both move. So this way, I can pause this guy. This is why I said the length wasn't super important here. As soon as they get there, go, drop, pause, out. Sync. Now they're in sync. For it, it's very common that you need your molecules to be in sync. It's also very common that the out of syncness only happens on the first play on the first time around. So there are ways you can do this without syncing up. For example, because this guy took a certain amount of time, I know exactly how long it took, I could have made this path really long and loopy, and then they would have synced up perfectly. That is a way to do things, and I've done that before. So now if we exit the reactor, this is just going to keep going, you'll see that as it outputs, the molecule goes over there, and we get this bar filled up. It's not filling up as fast as it was the first time, because it's just not as fast as it was the first time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, there, there's a lot more going on. So, in some, there are some levels where you have multiple outputs, and so this bar will fill up very slowly. And each output, however, has its own bar. So let's go ahead and speed up. You can speed up somewhat fast, or just hit the four fast. There we go. All right, so we got by five cycles better than last time. Woohoo! Most everyone else did the same thing we did. One reactor, which is all we were, you were allowed, and symbols used. Let's show you a, one that's a later. Let's, let's look at this one. Okay, yeah, this is a good one to show. So this is the last thing I'm going to show you, and this is just an example of how complicated things can get. This isn't even a super complicated thingamajigger. If you, in this one, everything that, like these inputs are providing only one input. Your inputs can provide multiple inputs at once. But this particular mission, I suppose, has you taking this input and this input. They go into some reactors. There's a switch of reactors. Stuff happens and you have to get two different outputs. Ammonia and hydrogen cyanide. Or hydrocyanic acid. Uh, very toxic, by the way as you can see here. Highly toxic compound and also highly flammable, used in many industrial processes, and ammonia, hazardous gas used in the production of fertilizer and pharmaceuticals because it's a source of nitrogen. So basically we're doing nitrogen fixation here. So we take nitrogen and ammonia, and we're gonna make some extra stuff with it. Um, if you watch what happens, I, 
This is a reactor that just takes the carbons and hydrogens apart and sends the hydrogens up here, um, or sends some of the hydrogens up here. Not all of them. The nitrogen and... Yeah, the, the nitrogen and other stuff goes over here. So I've sent four hydrogens up here. This guy is going to send one of those hydrogens back down where we assemble it into hydrogen cyanide. And this guy's going to uh, take the ammonia and send it off. You'll notice one of the things that's happening up here is this guy right here. This is a rotational symbol, and it will rotate your molecule whenever you need it to you know, rotate and stuff. Boom, rotate. And I do that only so that I don't have to make the loop up. That way it fits into this better. Um, the rotation isn't actually super, super, super important, but anyways. This is also very carefully timed out, and you'll notice that in this case, the loop is a little different. The loop doesn't actually go back to the start. It does form a loop, however. It goes up and around, up and around. Um, and there are, there's like only one sink, I think. I think the sink is right there. Everything else is just lined up and it worked out really nicely. Sometimes that can be a problem where you have an incoming thing and yeah. So this is going to send a nitrogen down and you can follow this down here and look. You had the C and H, so they come on, bring the N, it forms a bunch of bonds, bond, 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 and drops. I'm only using two bonders, I got these two out of the way just so I wouldn't have to the sink waits up for the sink. Everything's great. So this is Space Camp, an interesting puzzle game where you're building molecules, doing some stuff that's very close to real-world chemistry. It's not exact real-world chemistry, but it's pretty darn close. And trying to avoid being destroyed by weird space monsters. Wait, what? Sorry, can't talk anymore. That's all for today. If you're interested, find it on Steam. It's pretty darn cheap, and I highly recommend it. It's going to be a lot of gameplay, and you get a lot of time. So, until next time, everypony, thanks for watching.